are in the Toyota Solution Studio, day two, Women in the World. And I'm here with Meredith Perry, who just got off the main stage on the panel, Women Design the Future. And it is indeed true, women have designed the future. Meredith has designed, uh, she's innovated a thing called U-Beam. U-Beam, tell us what U-Beam is. Okay. This is cause, okay, go ahead, tell us what U-Beam is. It's extraordinary. Thank you. Um, U-Beam is a wireless power transmission system. Uh, basically, what that means is we are going to eliminate all of the wires in the world. And you are transmitting electricity wirelessly. Yes. That's a, how, how did this come to you? Um, you? You got sick of looking at the wires all around, like in that corner and this corner? Or seriously, how did this? Well, it was actually kind of funny because, I mean, you know, you're so used to using the same devices every single day. And, you know, and even though I was annoyed by my wire, uh, it, it, it didn't occur to me that there didn't have to be one until just one random day, just like holding it in my in my room. And ha and that was there a, a lightning strike moment? Not yeah, it really was. Not to extend the it really was. electricity metaphor, but what happened? Um, so I got really excited and I was like, oh, th this could be a really cool idea. Um, I didn't know that you know Nikola Tesla had worked on wireless electricity before anything like that, and I didn't even know um, what the proper term for wireless electricity was. I was just like, whoa, is it possible to like, beam energy through the air and, and wirelessly charge our devices. So I started doing tons of research on, um, on wireless things. And I realized that you could basically beam the entire electromagnetic spectrum, which is everything from radio waves to gamma waves. Um, and, uh, but soon realized that none of those could possibly be commercialized um, for uh, either regulatory or safety reasons and, or efficient, efficiency reasons. And so came up with a, a different way to do it. Um, What's that way? So what we do is we beam out ultrasound, which is high frequency sound, um, through the air. Uh, so we beam it at a frequency too fast for people to feel, and then it vibrates a receiver, which could be like your phone case or just a you know regular uh, material that we put inside of a di device at a frequency too fast for you to feel, and then we convert that vibration into electricity, and it charges your device. And is that frequency the same in every in every instance? In other words, how do you, I guess my question is, what is the uh, invisible wire? How do you prevent mm -hmm. uh, the confusion of transmissions? So are you talking about in, in terms of like uh, powering multiple devices? Yes. Okay. Um, so we actually send out, we send out there's multiple lots of, beams. Example, there's lots of wires in that corner. Yes. So how are you going to get all of the electricity that's in each of those individual wires from all the multiple devices to the other multiple devices without getting in a big jumbled mess mm -hmm. like they are in the counter electronically? How are you going to do that? So um, we have a very intelligent layman, system. Like yes. Um, so there's a communication system between the transmitter, which beams out the energy, and the receivers, which receive the energy. So we know at any given point in time exactly which devices are in a room, where they are, where they're moving, what orientation they're in, how large they are, how much power they need, and, and that updates our system in real time. So we know everything about what's going on with electronic devices in the room if they have a U-beam receiver on it. And so we beam out separate beams to each separate device um, depending on where they are, how large they are, things like that. Does that make sense? How it totally makes sense. Okay. You made it totally understandable for a layman like me, okay. who is not an engineer and not an inventor, not gonna. That's okay. I'm not gonna tell you a solution. <laughs> any of the world's problems right here. But to, how how long was the time between you had this lightning strike moment that this could happen or that it should be able to happen, mm -hmm. and when you developed the technology filed for the patent? Um, that was about. Uh, well, okay, yeah. Um, so I thought of it in in late 2010. And it took two days to come up with the concept, um, and uh, and then I, I actually put it to rest for a while because I think I just thought that people wouldn't be interested in it, and then I, I went back to it, and then it took about two months to go from you know really researching through it to filing a patent. That's extraordinary. Only two months. All right. But it's so taken. It is now taken. Uh, it, I guess almost three years from that time to actually develop the real device, and that's with the help of some really brilliant engineers. Well, um, uh, you could ask many inventors in our past, especially around the beginning of the 20th century, whether three years uh, was enough. For example, Alexander Graham Bell at the telephone. I think people have worked on, on a lifetime on new technology, so three years is nothing. That's true. It feels um, like a nightmare. <laughs> what are you, what are, you're young, too. What are you looking at next? You've, you've cracked this nut. Mm -hmm. You are a, a thoughtful, engaging, innovative person. What other problems are you looking to solve? Um, I am looking to solve problems in health. I think it's ridiculous that 
Um, we as human beings walk around not understanding our own biology. You know, we get sick and we have no idea why. And so I want to make implantable medical devices um, that can basically tell you in real time what's happening with your body. Like, you know, it could take a blood test in real time and say, like, oh, your potassium levels are low. Or like, oh, like, you have a growth in, you know, on your kidney. And like, I would want to know that. Um, <laughs> like really early on we and, and it's crazy that we have you know all these really intelligent devices and, and none of them are inside of us telling telling us what's happening um, so that's one and there's a lot of others but. I, I think the universe would vote for you working on that one next and okay. if you could solve it as quickly as you solved U-Beam that would be great for uh, for a lot of people actually. done give me a couple of days so <laughs> thank you very much for being here with us Meredith in the Women of the World Solutions Studio Toyota Solutions Studio uh, thanks very much bye bye